Previously, I'd reviewed the NHU9S and its Chromax brother. I said I'd do a video on trying to answer the question of whether a painted cooler performs any better or worse than an unpainted cooler, and what better opportunity do I have than having an unpainted NHU9S and the factory painted Chromax version in my hands at the same time. I don't have it right now, I did the recording a while back. Anyway, I've had a couple of trains of thought on this question and some people have gone to quite a lot of length to explain how black body radiation means a painted cooler will perform better and others say that adding a layer of lower conductivity material will insulate the tower resulting in worse performance. My thoughts were very much in the second theory camp but I needed to know for sure so I don't go around assuming the right answer with nothing more to go on way too much of that going on as it is. Now, while I did test these coolers individually before in the review, and you can see the results of that on the screen now, we can't use these results to answer the question of whether the painted tower is any better or worse with regards to thermal performance. Now, some of you may be scratching your head thinking, why not? They're the same, but one is all black and the other isn't. Now that is true, but if you dilute the packages down a little, with each cooler you have a fan, which means if you have two coolers, you've got yourself two fans. And taking a look at the back of the boxes, we've got a giant plus or minus 10% screaming in our faces. So we need to change this so they're both using the same fan. Now that is easily done by testing either of these coolers with the other cooler's fan and comparing it to the results we gathered previously. But we can do better than that. So I've tested both coolers with their original fans and then tested them again with the fans swapped over. This gives us more information on not just the coolers but a little on the performance of the fans too so we can tell not only how the paint job affects things but how the minor differences in the fans affects things, if at all. So what are the results? Well, this took me a second to figure out how to explain what's going on, but I think I've got it nailed down now. So starting with my acoustically limited testing with Firestrike, with the fan speed of the coolers tuned down to output the same noise level, the difference between the two versions of this cooler, black and painted and and bare with the brown fans is 1.8 degrees and with the black fans is 1.6 degrees the painted cooler being hotter you've probably already worked out why i've said it in that way but for those of you lagging behind the why like i was we need to compare the coolers with the same fans to figure out the difference of the towers we're using and swapping two fans just for more data so moving on to the acoustically limited priority 5 testing the results show a difference in performance of 1.4 degrees with the brown fan and 4.6 degrees with the black fan. That seems nuts to me, but it all checks out on the data logging through the three run tests, so it just happened to be hotter. Extra stats by the way, all fans were spinning at 75% on the U9S's, floating around 1610 RPM speed. Moving on to the full fan speed testing, with Firestrike testing the brown fan, shows the black painted cooler causes the CPU to be 1.6 degrees hotter, and the black fan testing shows a difference of 0.7 degrees, which is within testing tolerance, so that's about even. And finally, Priority 5 shows a difference with the brown fan of 1.5 degrees, and with the black fan a difference of 2.9 degrees. Again, a lot hotter, larger difference with the black fan for some reason. Potentially caused by the Chromax fan not spinning as fast on the Chromax tower. Why? I'm not really sure. I can't imagine the paint job is causing that much resistance. So, if we average the temperature difference between the painted and unpainted cooler between all the testing results, just for the sake of wrapping this up, the painted tower causes the CPU to be 2 degrees hotter, just over. Highest difference being 4.6 degrees and lowest difference being 0.7 degrees. Now am I saying this means all painted coolers will perform worse than their unpainted counterparts? Yes. I mean, I mean, no. Uh, who knows, really? At least for these coolers in this instance, it looks like there's a noticeable and, more importantly, a consistent difference between the two and how they perform. But this is merely one data point for these coolers specifically. To get a full understanding of this, you need to test tens, hundreds, preferably thousands of these coolers. Then you'd want to look into the paint types, thicknesses, applications, and any other variables, even build quality or the variations between one cooler and the other. But what is the difference really? 
It looks like worst case up to four degrees by testing with a 100 watt load on my test bench and limited fan speed. But realistically, in everyday usage, there will likely be a difference closer to two degrees or less. I know a lot of people will obsess over those two degrees, but if you're riding that close to the edge of whatever your temperature limit is, Two degrees isn't a world of difference, so it's not worth losing sleep over. So, before I go too deep into the analysis of this stuff, uh, frankly, I'm out of my depth already, I'm going to rest my case there since I don't know any better than the results I've gathered. So, I hope you enjoy this one. If you're interested in how dual and single fan coolers compare in performance, get subscribed since that video is coming up really soon. So is a review of the Fantex P200A if you're into ITX cases, a lot more of that on the way. Otherwise, a like, comment, and maybe even a share would be greatly appreciated. It really helps grow the channel. A huge thanks needs to go out to my supporters on Patreon, whose names are on the screen now. And if you want to support the channel to make these videos better, get your name in the credits and gain access to weekly-ish updates, please consider supporting me over on Patreon for a few dollars a month. Thanks again for checking this one out, and I'll catch you in the next one.